Blau und weiß sein Leben lang. Herzlich willkommen zurück auf Shark America. Welcome to episode 182 of Shark America. I'm your host, Richard Carmen, joining me on the Monday after the River Derby. Not so much a victory Monday, but it feels like one. Welcome, Jack Mangan. How are we doing, Jack? Doing well. Uh, it does kind of feel like a victory Monday, which I guess is a, uh, a sad reflection on the state of our club <laughs> in general, where a draw feels like a win, but... You know, uh, an important fixture uh, for both teams. Title implications for Dortmund potentially. We love to throw a wrench in the, in that if we can, and obviously a, a big game for us as most of these games are recently in terms of our relegation fight. So uh, to go up against a, a vastly superior squad um, and uh, put in, well, I mean, ultimately get the job done. We'll say in terms of getting something out of the match. That was great. Uh, certainly keeps the momentum going for us. I think, and uh, now we have a, a platform into this Augsburg match coming up this weekend. Yeah, and I think we, you know, with all the teams that are in and around us, we get a battle here over the next, you know, month, over the last month, and and for the next month, um, we knew that this game, if you know, if we could get a result out of this game, it would just be the cherry on top of everything else, as long as we do our job and everything else. Um, and I, you know, I also say it's victory Monday because you know it seems, it feels similar to the game, the fear fear game for the four four game back in twenty seventeen. Not so much that was a, that was a classic, but result notwithstanding, you know. Um, Obviously, we were higher on the table at that time, but you know this game coming in here, two teams in fine form. We were on a six-game unbeaten streak. They were on a ten-game winning streak. Obviously, like you said, a lot on the line here. They're going for the Bundesliga title. Uh, they're right there, neck and neck with Bayern. They're tied in points at the time, heading into the weekend. We were in a relegation survival fight of ourselves, uh, and so we knew this is. I mean, this is a big game with these derbies. You throw form out the window, despite both teams being um, in in good shape. Like I said. Um, Thoughts heading into this derby. Obviously, Dortmund had a an extra game in the midweek against Chelsea, which they lost. I thought it took a lot out of them. Um, curious on your thoughts heading into this game. How you thought we should have attacked them in this game? You know, pre-game before before everything came out. Yeah, we discussed that a little bit last week, right? Um, they obviously have the midweek game, so we should be in better shape, a little more well rested potentially. Um, going into this one, which would obviously work to our advantage to whatever extent. Uh, I mean, because I mean, obviously they, they have a better squad, technically speaking. They have more talented players. I think they have better athletes as well. So any sort of physical advantage we can try to curtail that that gap is important. Um, I think what we ultimately ended up doing is we tried to kind of man mark them across the entire pitch. Um, I don't think that worked particularly well for the most part, especially in the first half. I think um, their quality was able to shine through a little bit. Um, and they were kind of able to pass through that and around us. And we had big gaps in the center of the pitch that allowed them to kind of run into space and transition. But um, the important thing is kind of in the final third is where we ultimately stopped them up for the most part and, and actually limited too many, you know, excellent opportunities in the first half. I think they created some, but it wasn't it wasn't, you know, overwhelming or anything. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I remember listening to the press conference prior to the game and Thomas Rice kind of kind of said kind of what we were saying that like you know you have to be you have to play them similar to what Chelsea did to them you know make them unstable you know yes we don't have a Kai Havertz we don't necessarily have a team as as strong as Chelsea but putting you know, put a lot of pressure on them make them feel uneasy that's going to be the way to victory I think and um I felt I mean we both felt the same way heading to this game um an interesting interesting game for sure I think tale of two halves uh, before we get to the game in particular, let's look at the uh, lineup for this one, uh, starting out with our team. Uh, starting lineup, uh, so it's funny because on the telecast, they were saying they made it look like it's a 4-3-3 for Shaka. I felt when I saw Iden, it was going to be a 4-2-3-1. I thought he would have been he's absolutely a right, right winger type player as opposed to more of a centralized player or in the midfield. I kind of felt it, it, it turned out that way as well. Uh, Jacob says a bend, not break defense. Yeah, we definitely saw that. Um Pretty standard. Well, there's been a standard back four for the last three, four games at least. It's uh, Bruner, Yoshida, Jens, and Matriciani. Obviously, Bruner still come, just came back. What last game I think it was. 
Um, midfield, the two guys who've been there forever, seems like Kral and Kraus. Uh, and then attacking trio of Bulter, Salazar, Aiden, with obviously Michel Fry up top. Thoughts on the lineup for uh, for our team? I think the most noticeable thing was just sort of that that stack on the right hand side of Bruner and Aiden at the same time. I don't know if we've seen that at any point this season, so it certainly uh, raised an eyebrow. But when you, the, when you're looking at the bench and other players that are available to potentially play out wide, there aren't that many options. You know yeah. what I mean? Like unless you yeah. wanted to rotate, you know, Salazar out there and play somebody else centrally, you know, like that kind of a thing. Um, so, I mean, I, I thought it was interesting. I was, I was okay with it overall. Um, once again, you know, Matriciani, uh, it, in there at left back as we wait for the, the return of, you know, Oweyan and Urinen, um, Matriciani gets a lot of criticism. He's gotten some here over times, but I think we're at the point where we just kind of, we understand like what his level is in terms of some of his strengths and weaknesses. And I think he deserves a lot of credit for his, and Rice, Rice spoke to this after the game too, but yeah. he deserves a lot of credit for, for being willing to uh slot in in a variety of positions and situations and just work his ass off and put in a shift and be fearless and you know sometimes he gets found out sometimes he has solid games and you know he, he worked really hard in, in a game here um against a superior opponent and uh had some big moments as well at times so you know deserves Absolutely. credit but yeah beyond that the, the lineup is very much what we've seen recently besides those kind of two uh two things Real quick though, uh, shout out to the Discord channel, everyone who's been on the uh, who's joined us on the Discord, uh, Shock America. Good shout out to you guys, you guys are awesome. Always a chatter in between games, during the games, everything, uh, and sharing some memes along the way. But uh, yeah, you know, I meant to ask, you know, you're talking about Matriciani there. Do we know his uh, his strengths? It seems like every game he pulls something out that we're not quite expecting in a good way. Uh, and this game is no doubt about it. I think. Uh, uh, the 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 phrase Lord Matriciani is gaining steam because he I mean again in this game he had uh, several huge crucial plays uh, in particular when one of the things was on Guerrero somebody point blank where he may had a, he, if he, the person shot it it would have been a goal more than likely considering where they were in the field uh, he he came up big in this game uh, and he did some did well against Malin a couple of times one on one yeah doesn't have the pace is, is, is that the chance you're talking about right at the end though. Um... I, I forgot who was taking oh, the first it, half. Maybe the first half. Maybe. Oh, okay, no, because th there was a shot in the, in the final minutes of the game that Dortmund had a shot in the box that was kind of v vaguely open, and Matriciani came flying in from the side. Yes, into, yeah, yeah, you know, okay, that like was a ground yeah, yeah. slide tackle though to get the block yeah. in, yeah, which could have been huge. a game saving yeah. game saving tackle at that point, um, which was huge. But yeah. sorry, go ahead. No, yeah, yeah, no, that was the play. That was the play. I, I didn't remember what time of game it was. This is all a big blur to me right now. But yeah, he made some plays. Also, you know, sliding, uh, stopping some some passes were going to happen and, and sliding all over the place. So you know, he had a really good game. I thought. Um, Kral and Kraus, I think, were fantastic in this one for sure. I think they, were, you know, having them in there, I, I kind of always felt comfortable with them there as far as the rest of the lineup. The, the defense has been strong lately. Fairman's been strong, but I think Kraus and Kral have really been the the glue for us. Uh, and then seeing, you know, obviously Bolton and Salazar is always going to be, and Fry really going to be guys who've been consistent lately. Aiden was the, the guy in the mix who I thought maybe he can get a chance here to really show what he's got. I don't know if he really necessarily showed it in this game, but um, the, when I saw him in the lineup, I said, okay, well, here's his chance. You know, you know, he's not playing right back, so he has a little bit more freedom going forward. Uh, so hopefully we can see a lot more in the crossing aspect because we talked several times about how uh, Cedric Bruner ne doesn't necessarily have to push up always. He does, and he did a crucial pass last week uh, but he doesn't always seem to to do that so having i den there as well kind of gives both guys kind of that freedom to stick to what they're good at um uh, thoughts on i den because i didn't i didn't think he of the guys in the lineup and obviously the guys did well as a group he's probably the the lowest rated out of all of them i think in this game as it as it turned out i thought i don't i mean that's for, not a bad thing for for me, I felt as though there were a lot of players that actually didn't have particularly great games or, or okay. do a whole lot. I felt that this was very much a, a Schalke performance um, that was more than kind of the sum of its parts. In that sense, I don't think there were that many individual performances you can you can point out and be like that guy played really well in the derby. I think it's Marius Bolter uh, that's probably like head and shoulders above the rest. Uh, and you know, outside of that, it gets kind of sketchy. So, I mean, I didn't, yeah, I mean, didn't, didn't do great. Didn't create uh, a ton, which was a little bit disappointing too, given that this is an opportunity where he's playing in an advanced role. So it's not even yeah. like he's playing it right back and then trying to get forward from there. Um, you know, he has an opportunity to kind of, uh, not worry on the defensive end quite as much. Not that you don't have any defensive responsibilities out there, but you, you know, focus less yeah. on that and kind of, you know, maybe try to 
maximize some of what we we see in his game as some of his better attributes, and we didn't really see a ton of that. But I thought he was decent at times in possession, kind of shielding the ball and, and connecting yeah. little you know little passes, that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, I mean, not a standout performance from him. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, as I continue to think that you know Bruner at the moment is is the more solid option for right back specifically. Yes, I agree. I agree about that. Um, and speaking of Salah, I thought Fairman had a pretty solid game as well. Had some big saves in the first half and the second half, I thought. Um, but, uh, yeah, in the overall strong lineup, I thought. Uh, and then looking at the other side of things, um, I mean, it's always going to be a strong lineup, right? Meyer, good goalkeeper. Schlotterbeck is a, a solid defender. Haller is always going to be a threat. Guerrero is a shock, a killer. Just, he is in every derby. Hummels, he's is just, you know, as much as we want to make fun of him and, and he's aging, he's still a pretty good defender, I think. And he, he had some good moments in his game, some not so good moments as well. Um, Hannes Wolf, he's uh, someone mentioned he's yeah. the new uh, Kevin Grosskreutz. It was probably a great shout. Uh, Malin, Malin's a talented player. Bellingham is probably their most talented player. Emery Chan is decent. Ryerson was decent. And uh, Bino Giddens was also pretty good as well. So strong lineup overall. Um, you know, going into this one, I thought. Considering it was a derby, considering we were at home, considering that Dortmund had just played in the midweek, that we were going to be the aggressors coming out in this game. I thought that we were going to use that home crowd to our advantage and really attack them. Um, and I know you felt that Dortmund didn't really have that many great chances in their first half. However, I felt like Dortmund had way too much of the possession. They were in the 70 percentile of, of us. Oh, yeah, that I would agree with for sure. You know, and I was disappointed that we did not come out as aggressive as I as I had hoped. In this kind of game, you kind of want to put the, the visitors on the back foot, at least to, to weather a storm. And they really didn't have to weather any really storm in the first half, I thought. Yeah, like I said, I mean, I, I do think that we came out with, with a pretty, once again, high line of confrontation. And, and we're trying to man mark them pretty aggressively across the entire pitch. I think we did back off over the course of the half. Um, I don't know if that's fatigue or what else, but um, I mean, you saw that obviously on Schlotterbeck's goal ultimately is is yeah. multiple players backing off and not applying the pressure that's needed. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, th I think you look at a lot of the statistical categories, it was wildly uh, unbalanced in, in Dorman's favor, whether that's pass completion, whether that's um, possession, XG, you know, actually in the first half, any number of things um, that, yeah, I, I, like I said, I don't, I don't think. We were particularly effective in what we were trying to do. I think they uh, certainly outclassed us and looked like the much better team in the first half. I mean, they did get once again. They, it's not, they didn't create anything. They got a couple good shots off. Fairman made a couple good saves, and then of course there's the yeah. uh, the Schlotterbeck goal that ultimately gets in there before the first half. But um, I, I, yeah, I, I think the takeaway from the first half would be that Dortmund um, potentially could have had more out of that, and that it could have been worse than one nil. Not that we played horribly, but yeah, it just it, you know we were kind of just hanging on. From there, yeah. uh, and, I, and really, the only thing that we can really point to, I think, is probably that Salazar chance on the on the homeless mistake, and that's one of the only great opportunities that I can recall from the first half. Perhaps I'm missing some, but I think we probably had like what, like less than half xG in the first half, something along those lines. So, yeah, I think we maybe registered a couple shots and well, one shot, maybe I think, and it was a Salazar chance. It was a a great opportunity to take the lead at that point, uh, and. Didn't even get on target. And I was screaming, like, just get it on target, man. Like, force the keeper to make a save. Don't freaking shoot a high and wide. I get what you're trying to do. Score a spectacular goal. Yeah. Like that St. Pauli goal. But, like, man, come on. You got to get it on net. Well, that's man. funny that you bring that up because that's what I, I mean. Well, I mean, it was the St. Pauli one where they hit kind of into the roof of the net, right? Yep. Like, yep. Yeah, exactly. It's so, like that was, <laughs> he has a tendency to kind of go for those power, you know, they're kind of sketchy. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, his shot wasn't that far away, but yeah, he's trying to kind of yeah. get a little bit of whip on it. And go like you know upper upper ninety you know if like the perfect kind of indefensible hit in in that situation you're one on one with the keeper, just get it on frame and get it low force a save you have yes. I think I don't know if it was Marius Bolter that was kind of approaching yeah. from the left hand side he may have yeah. been able to sweep something up if it did get bounced back out, um yeah it's just it's a it's a poor decision in terms of shot selection from him but at the same time if he makes that he's a hero and everyone you know thinks he's a genius so that's just kind of the way the football goes sometimes i think but um <laughs> uh, uh yeah hummel's making a mistake uh he's had some mistakes um so he's not really i don't know i, I feel like he's he's kind of prone to that at times he made tobias uh, Moore look good <laughs> we'll get to that uh but yeah no, i mean i think fairman was really good in the first half probably the better of shaka but mostly because of he had to face the shots right i, I think he made a great save on bellingham um, before that Salazar chance, he had to save it on on Malin. Um, Great feet from Malin on that one, yeah. kind of like pirouette in the box. I thought that was a goal too. 
when he had that. But uh, yeah, there's a couple of saves he had to make. I think Hannes Wolf had some opportunities too, and he made some saves as well. Uh, but then you, know, you mentioned it, I think five months before halftime, we were waning. You could tell that it was building. Something, a goal was ha- going to happen out of nowhere, or not out of nowhere, it was just coming. And sure enough, you know, the ball gets cycled around, and Schlotterbeck comes up from his center back position wide open, gets the ball. Nobody puts pressure on him. I mean, Yoshida hesitated massively. And then Fairman probably could have done better on the goal as well, I think. Um, but Schlotterbeck, to his credit, saw the chance and, okay, I'm going to take it. He took a shot and celebrated after the goal. But, I mean, a great shot by him. But we, Yoshida and guys could have done a lot better. And I think Fairman also could have done a lot better as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, to be, to be fair, to some extent, you're probably not expecting – Schlotterbeck as a defender to just kind of step into that and whack one from outside the box, but um, you can't back off that much. I mean, Aiden had an opportunity to kind of pinch in and tra- maybe try to trouble Schlotterbeck, and instead he kind of stayed where he was. I think kind of keeping an eye on you know the left back that was a little bit further removed, and then yeah, and Yoshida just kind of backed off and backed off, and ultimately Schlotterbeck takes the shot. I think at a well timed moment where uh, Fairman doesn't have the line of sight because Yoshida's in the way. Um, and you know, in, in fairness to Schlotterbeck, he hits it really, really well. It's hit hard. It's hit low, uh, crosses body, body to the far post. Um, and I think by the time Fairman sees it, it's probably already halfway to him. So, I mean, yeah, you could argue that Fairman could have done a little bit better there. To me, I'm not putting too much stock on, on Fairman's role in that one. I think that's more uh, the defense letting up far too easy of an uncontested shot there. So, um, yeah, disappointing. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's not it's not like the worst goal because you know what i'm saying like this is yeah, what you no, and i always yeah. talk about is like when you're playing a team like dortmund that's so much better than you you want it to be the ones like you know like, like the mall and chancellor where they just they just slice you open pass through you somebody makes a great play and you have to just kind of tip your cap you don't yeah. want it to be somebody like yoshida who's usually a bit more solid just backing off and making a mistake like that and giving up kind of a cheap goal so disappointing to see especially because that was as we were approaching the end of the first half and getting close to halftime and a little bit of a de- demoralizing moment but yeah. Um, like I said, fortunate that that was the only damage that we had and some of those other chances Fairman was able to keep out for the time being. Like I said, it could have been a lot more lopsided score-wise in the first half. I think after, after when, the, when we got the first half, you look at the statistics, I mean, I, I think Eric or someone in the chat said, like, you know, statistically it looked lopsided, but, you know, if you're watching the game, it was, oh, you know, we did okay. We did pretty decent in the first half um, considering limiting their, their opportunities. But if you look at the statistics and you're like, damn, man, they, they're really putting it to us, you know, 70 percent i think 70 something percentage of, of a possession more than double the shots that we had uh we just our, our passing accuracy was in the 50s i mean it, it was this bad overall for us in terms of statistics and i'm like god this is gonna be a long afternoon if we don't you know figure something out here um and it's not the performance in the first half that i was expecting the second half we were the better team. I, I'm going to argue and say that we were the better team in the second half. We came out, we came out as we were hoping to see. At least how I was hoping to see that passion was coming out in the, immediately in the second half. Uh, we got our first shot. I mean, the whole play was just beautiful because it was the complete opposite of the first half in terms of what we saw. Um, Bellingham gets the ball, misplays the ball, and Crawl out muscles him to you know make to get him off the ball. Kraus immediately scoops up the the, the loose ball, gives it to Salazar. Salazar heads up the field. Gives him Michel Fry. We talked about this last week or a couple weeks ago. Michel Fry doing what the other strikers cannot do and is mobile enough to get on the wings and make those crosses in. Found him on the right, and, and I see Bolter running. I'm like, please find Bolter. Please find Bolter. And sure enough, he gets a beautiful pass. I mean, Michel Fry gets a lot of credit for you know the assists he's had the last few weeks. Finds Bolter. Bolter puts it away smartly. Bolter, luckily, as as goofy as he may look at times and the way he runs and stuff like that, he's he's a two-footed player, which is a benefit to us. Uh, because had he tried to go with his left foot, he may have missed it. And he and he opened it, opened up his hips, scored the goal, had to do some kind of freaking flip over the goal uh, over the camera. But nonetheless, one one, he could have been injured, but, but you know, in that play as well. But what, what a play overall! Yeah, absolutely. And it's interesting because <laughs> I think one of our better moves, better sequences in the first half involved Bolter on the left hand side kind of getting on the edge and then trying to play a very similar ball across to to fry and he just kind of mishit it didn't get the purchase on it and it was scooped up by a defender um this yeah. this opportunity was obviously you know fry was able to execute the ball a little bit better um it almost looked like i figured if it was like chan or somebody else almost like they kind of pulled up a little bit when they could have maybe tried to go for that interception but both are stayed on side made a well-timed run was there at the back post to tap it in and executed it and yeah luckily didn't injure himself on the camera that was <laughs> In his way immediately, which was a strange thing, but yeah. um, actually, really good ball from Salazar as well to Fry. Uh, yeah. Like he, he drifted out a little bit so he could get a little bit more of a like a direct 
pass and played a very well, uh, well weighted, incisive ball that kind of pulled Fry into the area that he needed to be to deliver that ball in quickly before the move kind of expired. So, yeah, credit and, and crawl. Um, crawl didn't maybe have the best game at times, but I think he, he made a because um, he, he actually had just like turned over the ball r- right before that on, the, on a pass as well. He was a little bit yeah. um, uh, unclean in that area in the department, but he was able to to uh, disrupt that play and kind of start that move. So uh, huge to get that one it was a like 50th minute, maybe. So just yeah. a few minutes after halftime. Um, Schalke come out, you know, with a little bit more effective pressure early on. And I think, um, I, it's funny. I think that that goal from us actually kind of woke Dortmund up for a little bit. And then they had a pretty good spell until I'd say maybe the 70th minute or so. And then from that point on, I feel like, um, we took over. Schalke really, uh, the, the Dortmund team, once again, despite being better, I thought they just lacked urgency in this game in the second half in particular. And I don't want to make it one of those things like, oh, Schalke wanted it more, but like, I really felt like Dortmund with the talent they had, especially like the amount of possession stuff, they could have just turned the screw a little bit more and tried to put us under more pressure than they did. And I thought they were just kind of going through the motions um, and and hoping that, you know, their class would see them through. I think Terzic kind of spoke to this as well because he said, yeah. like, you know, there's a couple of different ways that we can approach the game. We can do like the emotional route, you know, and get fired up for the derby where we can just kind of, you know, try to play superior football. Um, and I think that's all well and good and that can work a lot of the time. But I think Schalke was buying into the emotion in the final 15, 20 minutes of the game, and Dortmund didn't match that intensity, and they and Dortmund almost lost the game as a result of it. I mean, they, not that they didn't have chances in the final 10 minutes as well. Yeah. Um. But yeah, when you're talking about a better second half from Schalke, I think that's that's largely what you're talking about too. The final 15, 20 minutes after we kind of weathered that that response phase from Dortmund. Um. You know, good stuff from us. One of the best football we've seen all season, honestly, maybe for a while too. You know, the way we played against a, a, a top team in the league in the Bundesliga. Uh, and with the performance that we had, I mean, I think you're right. I think, you know, to start the game early on when Dortmund had the chance that they weren't scoring, Teresic looked, looked nervous. He looked worried. They got the goal, kind of calmed the nerves. I think when Bulter's goal went in, you saw everyone's face were like, oh, shit, we're going to be one of those kind of games. And I think you're right. The fact that they weren't playing the emotional card hurt them. And it obviously, it obviously helped Schalke. Um Tursic again looked very worried when that goal came in. Yeah, Dortmund responded very well. The next 10, 20 minutes, they were probably the better team. Um, the goal that they scored, even though they're the better team, I thought we were, were playing pretty well defensively to kind of limit some of the great great opportunities they had. Until the goal scored by, of course, Schalke killer Rafael Guerrero um, cut us wide open. They tried it again almost immediately after the goal. But uh, on the goal, I forget who, I think it was Belling that made a fantastic pass across no one marking Guerrero, the, the one guy you probably should keep your eye on the whole freaking time around this kind of game. Wide open. Uh, no one can close him down in time. And I don't, I totally forgot you know, who missed the assignment there. But great shot by Guerrero. Could Fairman done better? Yeah. But, I mean, it was a great shot by Guerrero. Great pass by Bellingham. Um, and like I said, up up to one at that point, they tried the exact same play through Hannes Wolf and uh, wasn't Guerrero. Someone else. Oh, uh, by the Giddens. And he missed it. He just missed the chance there. So, yeah, that 20 minutes you talked about or 10 minute span, they they could have had a couple goals there. I thought we played well defensively um, when Dortmund had kind of sustained possession in the final third. It was really when they tried to go over the top or on some of those transition moments that it was an issue. And the goal that you're speaking of, I think, is a great example of what I was talking about earlier in some of those high pressure moments where they're really trying to close them out. Yeah, A couple times when they're able to pass through that, suddenly there's this you know, acres of space in the center of the pitch <laughs> with, with no shocker players on that particular play, he's able to advance the ball, you know, like 25 yards with, with literally no pressure, just dribbling the ball forward. And he has so much time to kind of pick out his pass. Exactly. Schalke is scrambling to get back to kind of like cover once again, I think we're a little bit fatigued and everything. And he plays a great ball through to Guerrero. And then as you said earlier, Guerrero's a Schalke killer. Um, you know, he's somebody who doesn't always get the acclaim, I think, in terms of sort of like the larger European consciousness. People don't really talk about Guerrero all that much as like, you know, like that that spectacular of a player. But I feel like every time we see him, he's just, I mean, he, he, he finds a way to hurt us. You know what I mean? And just pops yeah. up in, in dangerous areas and, and, you know, great finisher as well. Um, and yeah. that was a really, really well taken goal. Uh, you got to give him credit. I mean, it, it, once again, another one across his body, just like shot back kind of that one in the air uh, pings it. Um, and uh, yeah. That that definitely hurt. Uh, that was that was a little bit too easy. When you look at like the number of passes that Dortmund had to make on yeah. that transition to get that one, and then it was like two, uh, and that's <sighs> not what you want to look for. So uh, scary moments. But then once again, like I said, I think I think after that, um, for the most part, it, it was us on the front foot and uh, and and putting the pressure on um, in the final fifteen or so. Um, 
that that goal that he scored was almost identical to the one he scored in the four four game uh, five years ago, six years ago. So he's been there for a while. Uh, but it was a great goal. You got to give him credit for that. Um, what am I looking for? Uh, not that game. Um, the the substitutions when they happened because I think they happened around the time. Yeah, they happened in the seventieth minute or so where we needed some fresh bodies in there. You saw Caraman come in for Salazar, Toro come in for Fry, Balanta come in for Kraus, and more come in for Iden. It was like you know. All within like a five minute span, all these guys come on in the 70th minute, and that seemed to reignite us, I think, uh, and play much better. And you wouldn't think with some of these players, right? Like Moore, Balanta, Karaman, you're like, those guys were some of our best guys in that second half. Uh, you know, you know, as much this as much we joke about Moore and what he what he's lacking. I thought he did well in the game. He could have had a goal, one of the one of the two shots he talked about at the end of the game where he should have scored. Um, but the pressure we applied back, we just it was like wave after wave by us, and you knew that dam was going to break at some point. And you kept watching the clock tick, 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 and like, oh, come on, just get something on there. Uh, and as you mentioned earlier, you know, arguably the man of the match, Marius Bulter, again involved. And I forget who it was, I don't know if it was Cedric Bruner or whom it was, but made the cross pass trying to look for him, and it missed him. He recovered the ball, makes a move on whoever was trying to defend him. Another guy's coming on to close him down, so two guys there, and he gets across him really quickly with his left foot. And Kairaman finally shows up. He finds a way to beat his defender. I forget who, who the defender was. Maybe it was Hannes Wolf, um, but beats him to the ball uh, and gets the goal. Clutch, clutch goal by him. Uh, the Turkish, the Turkish uh, call was like, Karaman, Karaman, Karaman. Kind of sound like my name, but we're not related. Uh, but I mean, I'll take credit, though. Um, but great goal there. And uh, I think from that point on, I thought we may steal this game. Well, how would you feel? Yeah, I forget who the defender was as well. Maybe it was Ryerson. I, I can't remember. Uh, exactly, yeah, I think but, you're right. I think it was Ryerson. Um, but uh, yeah, hey, look, listen, this is what's funny about derbies, man. This is the magic of the derby. You have somebody like Keenan Karaman, who, let's be honest, has not been effective in his in his uh, his opportunities and his appearances for Chicago so far. This is a signing that we brought in just to kind of throw something on the dartboard, see if we can get some offensive spark. Hasn't been able to provide that, but comes on in a in a cameo role not a cameo you know a substitute role in, in the derby and shock legend it, but i mean that's the thing though it's like not a shock legend but like, yeah, like yeah. he's he's going to be part of the conversation of the this is the 100th derby between i mean shock revere derby between shock and dortmund game time he comes goal. on makes the difference to make it 2-2 um that's going to be a goal that people talk about 10 yeah. years from now yeah not in terms of like this game in particular was the, the best game ever but like when you talk about the history of the derbies like you're going to look at games like the 4-4 the 2-2 like some of these close exciting games and he's going to yeah. be part of that conversation piece for uh for history now so you know yeah. it, it's funny how some of that stuff works out but um yeah bolter does a good job to, to whip that in he uh it's it's poor defending i mean let's just be honest like we have, we have to shout that out it's not like it was the most spectacular piece no. of play from Schalke. a little bit lucky um uh like i said if it was ryerson or somebody else but he he doesn't really keep body contact with his man and Cameron's able to slip in front of him at the last minute. Um, and Cameron's kind of moving to his left and away from goal too, which kind of makes it yeah. difficult to get, you know, the pace on it, but he gets decent Perfect contact placement. and it's, it's yeah. a really, yeah, it's a really well executed header um, makes it two two. Uh, certainly an unlikely source, but uh, we'll take it. And then from that, yeah, that point game on. Um, and that's why we love that's what I'm saying. Form out the window. These kind of things can happen. Dortmund superior yeah. in almost every category. And, um, randomly Schalke finding a way to score two goals in a game, which is something we haven't done a whole lot of uh, recently. So good for us. Apparently his last goal in the Bundesliga was three years ago against us. So of course, there you go. <laughs> but anyway, it, it's a you know, great goal by him. And I think it really ignited us. And as the game is closing out, you know, there's a play where Tobias Moore, I thought he came on and did very well in the second half, as well as Karaman and, and Balanta. Moore comes on the left wing side, and and Hubels, who had a pretty decent game, he had a couple of mistakes, like you know, the top of the Salazar play earlier in the game. He got his ankles completely broken by by Tobias Moore, and Tobias Moore cuts cuts in, cuts in again, and then takes a shot, decent shot. I mean, you know, Meyer saved it, but you know, really good save by him. Uh, of course, a great shot by Tobias Moore. And then minutes later, I think Moore again, but this time from the right side, find a way to get the ball to Belanta. Belanta does really well to put in there, knock the ball down. Takes a shot again. Meyer with a big save there. His two save. Meyer had two saves in the game. Those are the two saves right there. Yeah, Nearly that, bl- that blunt effort. I thought was yeah. maybe gonna get, was maybe going to get through for a second. Which would, once again, that would have been even more unlikely goal score if you get you get goals from Caramon and Balanta to win three two would have been incredible. But oh my god, that's what I'm saying. I think the the lion's share of the opportunities down the stretch came our way, and it looked like we had, sometimes we were the more likely team to score and potentially break the deadlock, which is pretty impressive. Um, and yeah, listen, like there's no there's no anti 
to be a more agenda on this podcast. It's just that to date in the Bundesliga this season, his performance had been straight up bad. Like, like, like he had, he had been actively poor. Um, yeah. And so once again, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see him come in and, you know, make it, make an impact and, and have a good performance. I have nothing against him. It's not, a, it's not that I don't want to see him. It's just, you know, like he, he hadn't been up to snuff so far, but that's, what's fun is you get some of these guys that haven't been big contributors and, and they get an opportunity in a big game and they come through for you. Yeah. And that, that he did. And those guys did as well. Um, and it would have been something had we stole the points. I mean, I think Sadio Mane, and I don't know how true this quote is, but apparently he was predicting a Dortmund loss, you know, after they after their game. Sadio uh, Mane. Sadio Mane. Yeah, nice accent there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we, we had those great opportunities. I thought we were going to win there. And all of a sudden, you know, they get a one last opportunity where I think Yoshida makes the first save and it drops to Guerrero or whomever right in front, like we talked about. And, and <laughs> the Lord and Savior, Matriciani, comes out of nowhere and just slide tackle it. And, giving us his best Maldini impression. Uh, and, I mean, fantastic save by him. Fairman had some big saves in this game, both first half and second half. And ultimately, we get the draw. We get the point, a much-needed point. You know, we said there was a, a six, a three-game stretch that we're like, if we get a point out of Dortmund, that would just be icing on the kick because, you know, we need at least six from the other two games. Um, and just – we got it. Yeah, then naturally, you know, bulk them doing what they do, which is play terribly for, for several games in a row and then just randomly get a win and then jump up the table again. And this Didn't is why help us. we have to get wins down the stretch because these yeah. draws aren't doing it for us. But hey, um, we'll take the draw against Dortmund. Like we said, feels like a win. Um, and hopefully we can we can do some damage against against Augsburg. We've been playing so well recently relative to what we've we've seen this season. Uh, just too many of these have been draws. So we haven't feel like we maybe gotten the reward from it that we would need. Um, which makes you a little concerned, right? Because you're like, well, we've had this really good run of form, but we really haven't gotten as much from it as we need to. And now you're worried that that form is going to dip and it's going to be harder to get those wins. But yeah. um, listen, credit to Thomas Rice, team still team still chugging. Marius Bolter, for example, I mean, like he was running his ass off for almost the full 90 minutes yeah. you know, that he was in this game, like end-to-end stuff. Uh, great effort from the team. Um, it's just fun. It's yeah. you know I mean like this is the thing is this is why I love this is why I love soccer it's like we're having an objectively terrible season and, and we're 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 scrapping for single points at the bottom of the table but like this is what it's all about and like you have games like that and you see you know the interaction between the team and, and like the Nord Curve after the game and everything and oh it's amazing um it's awesome it's good stuff yeah. it is uh, it is awesome and you, you do get disheartened when you're like hey we're on a seven game unbeaten streak and we're still second bottom of the table but you know you look we're right there within thick and thin we're, we're within two points of you know coming at fourteenth fourteenth position here. Uh, we got some very winnable games in the next two games. Um, we no longer have the worst defense in the league in terms of total goals conceded. So that's how that's how good we've been. We actually have the best week. defense in the second half of the season. That's how crazy true. is that? How crazy that is, is that? True. Yeah. Uh, that, this Dortmund game didn't really help because we conceded two goals. But yeah, I mean, certainly before that we had been sterling. But yeah, uh, yeah, pretty yeah, pretty crazy. Uh, it, it's 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 funny. For a long time, we had the worst defense by some margin, and then uh, it would now. I think now we're only like off that by like two goals or so so the margin you know yeah. for us in the bottom is but it shows you how how far we had to had to go because we had so many games recently we, we didn't concede any goals at all and we're it, still right there it's it's unreal it really is uh but you know we got to keep it going we have to keep it going we got the game against augsburg this weekend we got to win that game we got to find a way to win that game they i thought they were going to pull a game over over byron they really gave byron everything they had i mean five three in that game so they can obviously score we got to be careful of them Leverkusen game, they're they're up up on the table now. They're you know, um, Xavi Alonso has really got them flowing, and they're what seventh or something on the table. So I mean, if we get some there, great. But I mean, the two games that are on the horizon, you know, game match day 27, 28, I think it is, Hoffenheim at at Hoffenheim, and then home to Hertha Berlin. Those have to be wins. They have to be wins. I mean, like these next four games, arguably, and I'm I'm curious on your thoughts. This arguably makes or breaks our season right here. You get four wins. Yeah, I mean, I think like we've been saying that for a while. But like, I mean, I, yeah, I agree with you. I mean, especially when you're talking about like games like Hurricane and stuff. Um, it's yeah. it's tough. And Augsburg, we have to try to take advantage of too. Um, yeah. This is the position we put ourselves in, though. We dig yourself that big of a hole. So many of these games down the stretch feel vital, you know, to the yeah. overall narrative, whatever. Just hope that we can kind of capitalize on once again this momentum that we have and um and keep it rolling. But uh, you know, impressive performance in the derby, considering you know the characters that we didn't have available: uh, Drexler, Danny Latza, Skarka. Um, I mean, not that Scarco has been particularly great or anything like that, but there's, you know, Vandenberg still injured, of course. Uh, Kazuki, um, and that's yeah. something else to talk about. Just came out today that he's going to be having ankle surgery. Oh, I, didn't uh, know that. I think tomorrow, potentially tomorrow or Thursday, maybe they said. So, you know, he's burst onto the scene, 
And now the comet in the night sky gone as early as he arrived. Uh, and he might be gone for the rest of the season. He may be gone for a month. We don't know what the situation is, but um, we're not getting him back anytime soon. So, you know, despite that being able to go up against Dortmund and, and get the result, uh, you know, gives you some confidence going into the rest of the year. And hopefully we get a couple more of these guys back, uh, you know, get Oe on back soon, get um, Drexler back soon. And then yeah. once again, maybe even Vandenberg. I don't know what his situation is, but you know, just get some extra um, some bodies because Jens and Yoshida have not had a lot of rotation recently. It's been them, you know, pretty much the entire second half of the season. I don't know if we want to have rotation because uh, I saw Seth Vandenberg play with the U twenty threes, and uh, he went for a back pass to the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper wasn't in goal, and empty on on goal. <laughs> there you so, go. Not. So. I haven't watched him. I'm not saying it's, but I'm saying like just, just yeah, for, for availability purposes in case yeah, somebody yeah. gets injured. We don't want to have Matriciani sliding in at center back if we can avoid it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It'd be yeah. nice to get kind of a full complement of, of players. Um, but uh, yeah. And another person to throw into the mix, another team to throw into the mix of this relegation fight, it's uh, Cologne. Cologne's all of a sudden dragged back into this. And this could be a you know big thing too that helps us. They're only, well, they're only, they're seven points above us. But I mean, anything can happen. They've been in free fall. They lost to Balcom on Friday. Uh, that result obviously didn't help us, and Stuttgart and Hertha also drew uh, on Saturday as well. So, uh, not the most ideal results, but um, yeah, we just got to keep doing what we're doing here and keep getting results. We're gonna have to. It's uh, this run has to go for the almost majority of the season, rest the rest of the season, I should say. So, um, yeah, it's it's uh, the River Derby was fun. I'm glad it was because uh, sometimes they're not so fun over the last several years, but uh, this was certainly one was one of the more fun ones in recent memories. So, um, glad we able to get a result in this one. And yeah, we've got a big game this weekend against Augsburg. Games at 10:30 a.m. 10:30 a.m. 10:30 a.m. Eastern Time, 9:30 Jack Time, Chicago Land. Uh, so we got to have it. Jack Time, right? Not not, not Central time. time. Jack Time, Eastern Time, and Jack, jack time. time. Gentlemen, Jack. <laughs> uh, yeah, and as Jacob says, we got a gauntlet at the end of the season. We don't want to be forced to try to get results there, but you know, you know how it is with, with, with Schalke. So. We'll see. We'll see. Um, man of the match from the game is it's got to be Bulta, right? Yeah, I think so. I think it has to be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I agree. I, I mean, yeah. Caraman and and, and Fairman get close shouts, but uh, yeah, Bulta just continued to do what he does. And you know, shout out to not a shout out, but maybe shout out to the Shaka team. Bellingham, who is arguably their most dangerous player, was rather quiet. I thought in the game, outside of his one shot in the first half that was saved. And that great assist to Guerrero, I thought he was for the most part kept in check by you know Kraus, Kral, and company, um, and really wasn't the, the the killer that we I thought he could have been in this game. Yeah, I, I think that's true for a number of Dortmund players. You look at the lineups, and and I mean, it, it, Derek Gray said it at some point on, on the broadcast was there's not a single Schalke player that would make this Dortmund squad. Yeah, on, on paper at the moment, yeah. and that's not you know to, to to you know shit on our own team. It's just it's just a realistic assessment. Like that is a much stronger squad that Dortmund has. And I think a lot of their players didn't didn't flex that superiority and didn't really show that as much as you would have expected them to. Um, whether that's entirely our uh, you know our doing or, or just once again maybe a lack of intensity and uh, whatever from them, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I mean it's great to see that we were able to keep them in check somewhat. Like you said, more dangerous in the first half and the second ultimately in terms of some of the you know the intricacies they were able to pull off in the final third. But uh, yeah, players like that are certainly a danger, um, and when you can avoid them making the impact, it's it's always nice to see. Oh, all right. Well, it's nice. Uh, I imagine this pod, pa- podcast could have been a lot longer if we went immediately after the game, but uh, we got some time to digest, review the game. Uh, and yeah, no, I feel I feel good about the result. Uh, and like I said, a coworker of mine uh, is a Dortmund fan, so I got to come in today smiling, and he didn't want to make eye contact with me. So it worked out. It worked out. Uh, anything final here before we uh, or talk about anything before we wrap this up? No, just shout out to uh, Royal Blue Tornado. The uh, the Chicago Shaka supporters group. I went down to the uh, the near Sasha Social Club, yeah, uh, in Lincoln Square this past weekend to, uh, to for the watch party down there. I hadn't been down there in a couple of years actually, so that was that was a good time. Um, nice to be back with some of the Shaka fans watching us uh, this season. Yeah, and shout out to the Virginia Canap, and they were over at the Donor Bistro in Leesburg. And I wanted to. I, that's why I was watching it before the uh, the pandemic. I, I want to go back out there, but you know we've got this uh, good thing going here with the. Uh, but the watch alongs and the results, so it's got it's hard to you know do one do do both. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll have to wait have to do a live one on site on location. That's a, that's always a possibility. That's always a possibility. So, yeah. Um, you gonna say? No. Oh, okay. I'm good. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, let's wrap this one up. Uh, I got nothing else. But Jack, where can our followers find you on social media? At JMA and JMMA and G A N on Twitter. 
Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, as always, you can follow me at r underscore k h a r m a n. Uh, anywhere on social media, go shout out to uh, go to shockamerica.com. Uh, latest article where we talk about uh, the clutch river derby performance by us. Uh, just recapping the game that we had there and uh, check out some other stuff in there as well. Uh, and then you know, again, the discord, I'm gonna send out the link for uh, for those who haven't joined the discord channel yet. Shout out to everyone in there as well. And then, um, yeah, uh, if you haven't done so yet, make sure on YouTube you subscribe and uh, like our video, that'd be much appreciated and very helpful to our content as well. So, for Jack. <laughs> For myself, for Shaka Nation, for Shaka World, uh, I'll say talk to you soon. Look off.